my beloved people, there are, there's one thing in particular that I wish to bring to your attention out of the bulletin this morning, and that is that Saturday, this coming Saturday, is the vigil of Pentecost, and therefore it is a day of fast and abstinence. You may eat meat once on Saturday at the principal meal, but otherwise uh, it is a day of fast and abstinence for those who are required to, who, who can fast and abstain. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen. My beloved people, next Sunday, is the Feast of the Holy Ghost. It is Pentecost Sunday. And as you know, at the present moment here in this church, we are having the Novena to the Holy Ghost. I don't think it would be an exaggeration to say that in all things today, particularly in things concerning religion, in all things today we have a great confusion. We do not know what to believe anymore. We do not know what not to believe anymore. And everyone around us seems to be standing up and preaching with a sense of power that is akin to dogmatism. Everyone around us seems to be teaching with the strength of one who is infallible. It is plainly obvious, and a lot of the, but it it is, again, yes, it is plainly obvious that these who are standing up to teach and preach in that way are not necessarily, and most often, are not in accord with each other. And that spreads further confusion. Truth is one. Why is it that in the sciences, mathematics, chemistry, physics, whatever, we are guided by truth and principle? And in mathematics, whichever, wherever we are, if we're building an equation and we do not agree that 2 plus 2 equals 4, when we're putting it in this equation or when we're putting it in this equation, or when we're putting it in another equation or whatever we're talking about, that something is not going to work out. All of the steps are correct. Everything we've done is correct. Yet somehow or other, it doesn't come out right. Because this person over here said, 2 plus 2 equals 3. Over here he said it equals 5. Over here he says it equals 10. Truth is one. And even the simple little statement of 2 plus 2 equals 4 in somehow or other in its own little way, that is leading us 
to the truth, which is God. In his own little insignificant way, God is one. He always has been one, and he always will be one. But in religion, in the things of religion today, we somehow seem to feel that the way I see it is the way that it is. What I see is not important. What is important is the truth. The Holy Ghost is the Father of truth. And, if each, and each one of these who are preaching and teaching somehow or other seem to be of the opinion that the Holy Ghost has inspired them to believe what they believe. So we go back, let us to, to carry out the parallel. The Holy Ghost told this man over here that two plus two equals four. Over here, the same Holy Ghost has told this man that two plus two equals six, and so on. If that's the case, the Holy Ghost has to be the father not of truth, but of lies. Or at least he certainly doesn't know his mathematics. We must pray to the Holy Ghost, to the Holy Spirit. And in these days, before and the days following next Sunday, we should pray to the Holy Ghost for wisdom. We should pray to the Holy Ghost for knowledge and understanding among the other gifts. We ourselves, every one of us, whether it's on that side of the communion rail or this side of the communion rail, it makes no difference. We have each got to pray for understanding. We have to understand what we are about. We have to be able to know that what we are talking about is of consequence. There is no other consequence on this earth of equal importance. It is of the highest importance that we understand what we are about. We have to pray for wisdom. We have to pray that we administer wisdom properly. That we are not fly-by-nights. The last thing we've heard is the best thing that we know. And so we are as inconstant as the moon. Remember what we have said in days past? Unless and until the heart, the heart conquers the mind, we shall not know. The mind is only, oh yes, it's built to think, but the mind is not built to feel. The mind merely goes on conviction, but the heart goes on wisdom and understanding and knowledge and piety and so on. We have to, under, we have to learn how to apply wisdom in our dealings with everybody, 
in our dealings with our brothers and sisters, our wives and husbands and children and mothers and fathers, friends at work, wherever, wherever, wherever. And we must also be able to be wise enough to know that we have got to leave some things up to God. Today, man, with all of his technological expertise, if I can use that word, I don't like it, man has come to the conclusion that he is able to control whatever he wishes to control. And all you have to do is look at the mess things have gotten themselves into. If man wants to be the one in control, Almighty God says, okay, go ahead and do it. See if you can succeed. But we continue. You would think that experience would tell us to, set, to stop and look that the experience would tell me to stop and look at the mess that I have created. I did it. Nobody else did it for me. I did it. But instead of saying and stopping and thinking, dear God, I don't know what I'm doing. Dear God, you are the one. Help me, Lord. I do believe. But please help me in my unbelief. That should be our prayer. And we should not be going around trying to convert, to convert, to convert, to convert. And if the lamp post would stand still long enough, we would do our job on the lamp post too. We must learn, and we must learn this well, that we must pray. We must pray more. I don't mean necessarily a life that's filled with prayers, you know, many, many, many prayers throughout the day, 1, 2, 3, 15, 20, 25 prayers a day. I'm speaking of a life of prayer where everything we do, every thought that we have, every move that we make, every work that we perform is prayer. But why this kind of prayer as an offering to Almighty God for him to step in and try to do something about the mess that I have created? You see, when religion has turned into something which has disturbed my calm, my peace, my serenity. When religion has done that to me, it is time for me to say, stop. Let us consider. When we approach God, it must be that we leave God in peace, in calm, in serenity, with no confusion. God does not confuse. I will say that again. God does not confuse. And if what I am hearing from you whoever you are, if what I am hearing from you confuses me, there's something wrong with that. Because if it be of God, 
if it be truly of God, it will not confuse. It cannot confuse. God is incapable of confusing. That's one thing that God cannot do. In his omnipotence, God cannot confuse. The, the, uh, the, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit cannot confuse. I am the one that confuses because of my ignorance, because of my pride, because of my self-centeredness, because of my feeling of self-importance. I am the one who is causing all the trouble. My beloved people, during these few days, let us pray with all the vigor that we have got that God would unscramble, somehow unscramble the confusion of thought which today is so prevalent. You know, you remember when once upon a time there was a flood and after the flood, man got together and they were going to outsmart God. And so they started building a tower which was going to be so tall that no matter what, how much water came to the earth, they would still be safe. And God came down and saw what they were doing. And what did God do? He gave them the confusion of tongues. Today, we have seen how religion plays an important part. And we have seen how religion can be used even to outsmart God. And what has God done? He came down and he witnessed it. And what has God done? He has given us confusion of thought. And we're all messed up. We're all messed up. We don't know who to believe. We don't know who to trust. We don't know who to talk to. Even in our own closed family circles, we can't trust our mother. We can't trust our father. We can't trust our brother. We can't trust our sister. We can't trust our wives, our husbands. Even our families have been shattered by taking a priceless dish, a priceless piece of china, and dash it on a stone. This is where we are. And we have to pray that this will be corrected. Somehow, a broken dish with our own ingenuity. We cannot put that dish back together and make it whole again. We can use the finest of glue, but the dish will always be, if I did it, a broken dish. The only one who can touch that dish with his finger and make it whole again is only God. And that's where we are right now. Only God can make this dish whole again. Only God can make the family whole again. Only God can make the church whole again. And the world whole, whole again. Only God. But God is not going to move 
unless and until we show him that we want him. God is not going to send his angels to help us until we ask him to send his angels to help us. God will not move until he sees goodwill in the hearts of men. And during these days, we must pray to the Holy Ghost that he will somehow plant all of these seeds not only in our own heads, but in the heads of all those we love most. That he will plant these seeds in the heads of those who are supposed to be the guardians, the guardians of that which is on that altar. Today, so many of us who were made to guard that are the very ones who are throwing rocks at that. And having thrown rocks at it, we have even moved it. We have even removed it. We've put it in the most bizarre places. We ignore it. We don't even think it important enough to throw rocks at anymore. This is the confusion that we are in. So my beloved people, pray. Pray with all the might you've got. Pray with all the strength you've got. Pray with all the love you've got that God will come to our assistance. Pray that our religion is not governed by defective thinking. Pray that our religion is not governed by defective thinking. Pray that our religion is not governed by defective thinking. <laughs>